everyone, I am Ms. Hu, your physics teacher, or to some of you, I am your science teacher. Now, this video is created for my year 7 students, but I've decided to share this on my YouTube channel because I believe that this would be helpful for many of you as this is a very fundamental topic in the electricity concept. In this lesson, we're going to go through circuit diagrams and the objective is to enable you to be able to draw and compare circuit diagrams as well as to draw and identify circuit symbols for common electrical components. Now, this is quite a basic topic because this is designed for Year 7 students. If you are looking for something a little bit more in-depth, please watch my other videos on electricity concepts. So, because this is designed for my Year 7 students, we're going to go through how to fill in the blanks in the booklets which I have printed for them. Now, even if you don't have the booklet, this video should still be beneficial for you. If you'd like to find out how you could get a copy of those worksheets or booklets, let me know in the comments below and I'll update you on my website at physicsrocks.com. For now, let's get right to filling up those notes. And by the way, I know electricity jokes are shocking. I know this is a lame meme, but we all know that Miss Ho's lessons are never complete without a meme. So first of all, let's go through what circuit diagrams are. So circuit diagrams are simple diagrams to represent the electrical circuit. So for electrical circuits, we don't normally draw the actual batteries or the actual components because it can be quite complicated to draw. Rather, we use simplified diagrams that look like these. So circuit diagrams are used because they are easier to draw. And the components within the circuits, that means the bulb, the wires, the cell, all have symbols. This means that they can be easily understood around the world. So whatever language that you're speaking, the symbols are universal. So anywhere in the world who looks at the circuit diagrams, they will know how to interpret it. Now, when it comes to drawing the circuits, the connecting wires must always be drawn as straight lines. This is neater and easier to interpret. In reality, the wires may not be so neat. They may have to be looped around certain situations, but when we draw them, we don't draw those loops or we don't draw them going around weird corners. We just draw them in straight lines because we just want to see how the circuit should be set up. So in order to be able to read the circuit diagrams, we need to be able to identify the symbols that we see in the circuit diagrams. In this lesson, we're only going to go through a few of the more common ones. There are of course a lot more symbols, and if you'd like to know more about those symbols, feel free to do your own additional research. For now, we'll just go through these few. So let's start first with the ammeter. Now an ammeter is a device that is used to measure current. We've already learned about current in an earlier lesson. For those of you who don't know what current is, do check out my video about current where I explain it in more detail. For now, we're going to move on. So an ammeter is a device that is used to measure current. The symbol that we draw for the ammeter is quite simple. And I'm going to draw it freehand over here. It's quite simply a circle with the letter A in the middle to represent the ammeter. And we normally add lines at the side here. So these lines are actually part of the connecting wires. Now the cell is the source of the electrical energy in the electrical circuit. So for the cell, you can say that it is the source of electrical energy. Or you can even say that it provides current and voltage. The symbol of a cell is made up of two parallel lines where one is longer than the other, like so. Again, we have the connecting wires on either side of the cell. We'll go through in more detail what these long and short lines mean. For now, let's move on to the lamp. Now the lamp or the light bulb is what provides light energy. In this case, so when we write the function out, we can say that it is used to convert electrical energy to light energy. Now there are two universal symbols that are accepted for the lamp. One of it is a circle with a cross like this. Now the cross has to touch the edges of the circle, not just one random cross in the middle. If you do this, this is already wrong. So do not do that. And again, we have the connecting wires on either side of the lamp. Another symbol, which is also universally accepted, is a circle. And we have a little bump in the middle like this. So that's usually to represent the filament. 
So for my students, just to let you know, the preferred symbol that's used in our syllabus would be the one on the left. It's not wrong if you use the one on the right. Actually, it's perfectly acceptable as well. It's just that the syllabus that you're learning, that means the textbooks that you are using, all prefer the one on the left. By the way, this is a tick in case you're wondering what's that red smudge. I'm just going to put a tick properly over here. Now let's move on to switch. So over here you see that there are two switches here and they're both actually the same component. It's just that you need to be able to recognize the symbol for when the switch is open and when the switch is closed. Because they're both the same component, you only need to write the function once. So I'm going to combine the cells over here and you just need to write the function one time. So the function of a switch is to be able to switch the circuit on or off. Now, similar to the lamp, the switch also has more than one universal symbol. So I'm going to draw two over here, but again for my students, the preferred symbol will be the one on the left. So an open switch means that the circuit is not complete. Normally, for the switch, we'll have two dots to indicate that's part of the switch. An open switch means that the circuit is not complete, like this. A closed switch would have a closed connection like this. So this is usually a knife switch. So it shows that the switch is open and closed like this. Another possible symbol would be a switch for a press switch. That means that the switch has a little connector on top that is not touching the leads. So when they're open, they're not touching. And when they're closed, then the connection is complete, like this. So that's for open and closed switches. So again, remember for my students, the preferred one is the symbol on the left. Now let's move on. So the buzzer basically buzzes and makes a sound. So the function of a buzzer is to make a buzzing sound. Why would you want to make your sound? Think about it and figure out what circuit would need to make a sound and for what purpose. So the symbol for buzzer is like a cup. You've got a half circle like this and the connecting leads are connected at the bottom like this. Now let's go to motor. So a motor is basically something that rotates. So the function of a motor is actually quite a lot. A motor could be used, for example, to make a lift move up and down. It could be used to power a fan to spin or even a washing machine to make it spin. So to make this universal, let's just write it this way. The function of a motor is to convert electrical energy to mechanical work. So mechanical work here means usually to run a machine in this case. The symbol for motor is very simple. It's a circle with the letter M in the middle, and of course, connecting wires on either side. Now, finally, the bell. Now, you might think that a bell similar to a buzzer. It's similar, but not exactly the same. So a buzzer basically is a buzzing sound, bzzz, but a bell is making a ringing sound. So that's what we'll write for the function. The bell makes a ringing sound, like an alarm. So because they happen to be so similar, even the symbols are similar. So the buzzer basically looks like a cup. The bell has a shape that looks almost identical to a buzzer, except that the straight line part is now at the bottom. So it looks like a mushroom in this case. So these are the symbols and the functions of some of the basic components that you need to know. Now let's move on to the next page. Now remember the difference between a cell and battery, and we've learned this in an earlier lesson. So I'm just going to backtrack to remind you, if you look at page 7, we've already learned about this. So this is not a battery. When it's all by itself, it is known as a cell. A battery is made up of two or more cells. So what we normally call as a battery in real life, actually it's a cell. So why we call it a battery in real life is because normally a battery pack consists of more than one cell. It's just that because we keep calling the battery pack a battery, so much so that many people think that a single component is also a battery. So as science students, you need to know that when it's by itself, it's a cell, while a battery is made up of two or more. 
So when it comes to drawing the symbols, you must be able to differentiate between the cell and battery. So a cell is made up of those parallel lines that we learned earlier, with one longer than the other, like this. Now you must be clear about which side is the positive and negative terminal. The longer side is the positive terminal, while the negative terminal is the shorter side. Now it does say here that often when we draw the symbol for a cell, we can also include the positive and negative signs. You'll find very often that the symbol is drawn without the positive and negative symbols. Without the positive and negative symbols, you must still be able to identify which side is the positive terminal and the negative terminal. Always remember the longer side is a positive terminal. Now, when you're drawing the symbol for a battery, you need to draw the cell symbols multiple times. If, for example, you know that the battery is made up of two cells, you draw two cells back to back like this. If there are three, then you draw three cells. And then you complete the battery with the connecting wires. Now, let's say you have a battery that has three or more cells. For example, if there are 12. It's difficult to draw 12 of these cells back to back to back, right? So a simpler way to draw a battery would be like this. You can draw two cells at a distance apart from each other, and then you put a dotted line in between like this. Now, of course, connecting wires on either side. The dotted line here just indicates that there are multiple cells between these two cells, at least one. So normally we would draw this symbol for a battery that has three or more cells. If there are two or three cells, you can draw it like this with the number of cells shown clearly in your symbol. Now let's look at the circuit diagram. By looking at the circuit diagram, you can tell what this device is supposed to do. What do you think this device is? In order to be able to tell what the device is, you need to look at what components exist in the circuit. So let's take a look. You can see over here you have a battery, you have the switch, and what is this? Look back at the table of symbols and identify what this symbol is representing. That's right, it's a bell. So when you look at this circuit, you can see that the purpose of this circuit is to be able to switch on and off the bell. So under what circumstance will we want to be able to switch on and off the bell? So definitely not a fire alarm. We don't want the alarm to be switched on and off easily. In fact, for most fire alarms, they should be started automatically. So let's find something else where you want to switch on and off the bell easily. So one, yes, it could be like a doorbell. Now, are there other possible uses for this device? Of course there are. There will always be many uses for the same kind of circuit because the same component can be used in so many different ways. So if you have other ideas on what this device could be, feel free to write this out. So now that you know about circuit diagrams and circuit symbols, please complete the classwork and all this additional work and fill in the success criteria. And that is it for this video lesson. So if you found this video to be educational and helpful, do click like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments how you have found this video to have helped you. If you'd like to help me keep making free educational video lessons and lab practicals, donations are welcomed at my coffee page. That's ko-fi.com slash physics rocks. If you are interested in the worksheet and would like to know how to get a copy, let me know in the comments as well. I will share updates about booklets and worksheets on my website at physicsrocks.com. Now, while you're there, do check out my other physics lessons which I have on IGCSE Physics, SPM Physics, Home Learning, and coming up soon, A-Level Physics. Free lessons are also available on my YouTube channel, so do subscribe and check out videos on other topics which you might find helpful. Happy studying!